Okay, I'll talk to you later. Yeah. We gather for worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to worship. As, this, as we join in this pre-VBS week, there's a lot of wonderful energy. We would invite you to stay after the service, if you have some time, to help us put up the Vacation Bible School decorations. Um, let's see, who will be leading that? Brianne is out there, and Lou Horahan will be back. Um, we will have several leaders who know where things go. We need your hands and your muscles. So no stress, just fun. Um, so that is today. Vacation Bible School begins tomorrow. You might have seen our Books Behind Bars display in the narthex. The children will be collecting coins and dollars to share with Books Behind Bars, uh, that's a prison ministry. They send books to people in prison so that they can better themselves in preparation for returning to, um, to community and society. We will be starting on August 1st. We're going to have a nursery tour and a gathering time for pre-K kindergarten kids and parents. So if you know anyone that fits that range, please uh, invite them. And next week is Christmas in July, July 25th on Sunday. So that will be lovely. We will um, join together with that. And so on Saturday the 24th, we're having the Advent Family Night that we didn't have here last year. So we will have crafts. Maybe you can bring some cookies to share, bonus if they're Christmas themed, and we'll have pizza. So if you could sign up for that, um, even if you haven't signed up, please come. It's going to be um, a fun evening. We're starting right after the Saturday 5 p.m. service with pizza, crafts, bonding, and fun. So those are next weekend. This is the last call for buying baseball tickets. So Jim Cuviello is here joining us from the 830 service. If you would like to do that, please talk to him today. Jim, will you wave for us? Okay. So raise your hand if you're hoping for that. All right. Otherwise, he's in the directory. You have until midnight tonight. 
<laughs> As we join in worship, we are holding uh, two people in prayer. Well, three really. Andy Frey, Fry has had um, issues with his heart, and so he is hospitalized. So we're holding Andy in our prayers. Uh, as well as the Pallet family, uh, Eric had had surgery um, amputations recently, and he's just not recovering well at all. Um, and so we're holding Eric in prayer, and when I spoke to Judy, she said she had had surgery this past week as well. So we would um, hold Eric and Judy in prayer and, uh, and support them as we can. Are there other announcements for the life of our community? Lunch Bunch is this week? Wonderful. Please speak to Barb if you would like to join in with that. Where are you going? Shimong Diner. Oh, very nice. <laughs> All right. Well then, as we have heard of ministry opportunities, so I invite you to rise as we join in the call to worship. Trust in the Lord at all times, O people. God is a refuge for us. God is our rock and our salvation. We shall not be shaken. God is good, and in God's work we find our strength. We sing Let us pray. Gracious Lord, our Heavenly Father, our redeeming Savior, and our guiding Spirit, be with us now. Pour out your spirit on us that this worship may be an encounter with your love, O Lord, and with the community that cares for one another and for your entire world. Bless this worship, O Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We join in our gathering song. Build a house where love can dwell and all can safely live. A place where saints and children tell and hearts are to forgive. Build of hopes, dreams, and visions. Rock of faith and vault of grace. Near our love of Christ shall end. All are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Let us build a house where love is found in water, wine, and wheat. A banquet hall on holy ground where peace and justice our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God from which nothing can separate us, and the life-giving Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us share the peace of the Lord with one another.
on the uh, trophy. Um, and so, as we give our offerings of time, talent, and treasure, we join now in our offering song. Have you thanked the Lord? Have you praised God's name? Don't you know that there's tomorrow? is quite the same. Have you thanked the Lord? Have you knelt in prayer? And rejoice that rain or sunshine, our God is there. Hallelujah, thank the Lord for sunset and that shines for you and me. Blessings so many come our way. Have you thanked the Lord today? Have you thanked the Lord? Have you praised God's name? Don't you know that no tomorrow is quite the same. Have you thanked the Lord? Have you knelt in prayer? And rejoiced that rain or sunshine, our God is there. I invite you to rise in body or spirit. Let us pray. God of grace, all that we are and all that we have are yours alone. Accept these gifts as a token of our love. Use them to bring peace, justice, and comfort to all the world. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. As we remember, on the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Behold, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Lord, Lord I, I am not, not worthy, worthy to receive you, you but only say, say the, word, the word, and I shall be healed.
Christ is with us here. In this bread there is healing. In this cup is life forever. In this moment by the Spirit Christ is with us here. is with us. He is with us. Know His grace. Find His peace. Peace to Jesus Receive the blessing, the body and blood, blood of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. As we join in our prayer of the day, I'm going to find my copy of it. God gives us many ways to pray, and uh, it is a joy to get to pray together. And so, oh, I'm good. Thank you, though. See, brothers and sisters in Christ. Yep. All right. Let us pray. O oh God, powerful and compassionate, you shepherd your people, faithfully feeding and protecting us. Heal each of us and make us a whole people that we may embody the justice and peace of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Mark, the sixth chapter. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught when he sent them out. Jesus said to them, come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of the disciples. As Jesus went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd, and he began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over, they came to land at Gennesaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized Jesus and rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went, into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak and all who touched it were healed. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise Praise to you, you, O Christ. I invite the congregation to be seated. Would our young ones like to come up for some time together?
what does this look like to you? A dog whistle, good guess. Yeah, it does, it has paw prints on it, doesn't it? But it actually shines a little light. It's a cat toy. Our dog likes it too, though, to be fair. So this is really useful because for a cat, to get it to chase, right, you have to give it something to focus on, right? So we're gonna look at a map that Mr. Reich is gonna put up on the wall, I hope. <laughs> There it is, all right. So when we look at something like this, it can be hard to find the specific things. If I asked you to find Jerusalem, is that super easy? No, but if I use this and I tell you, let's see, there's Bethlehem and right above it, there's Jerusalem. Your eyes can focus on it, right? Let's look over here. Can you see that capital J in Jerusalem? Yeah. So. When we have something like this and it helps our eyes to focus, it tells our eyes where to rest. This does the work. And then our eyes can rest on that space and actually see something we couldn't see before. And that's sort of like why we read the Bible when we gather for worship is because the Bible is like this. It focuses our eyes on one time when God did one thing and then we can learn from it. Because otherwise, if we tried to learn everything at once, if I told you to read the whole Bible this afternoon, do you think you'd learn a whole bunch? You'd probably get pretty tired, right? Yeah. So when we hear scripture, it's like this laser pointer that tells our eyes, you can rest right here and God will do the work. Isn't that a wonderful gift? Yes. Do you have a dog at home? Do you have one of these? Oh my goodness. All right, maybe I'll loan you ours this week because dogs love to chase these too. All right. Thank you for coming up. Good morning. Jeremiah prophesied before the exile in 587 BCE. In this passage, he uses the metaphor of a shepherd to describe the bad kings who have scattered the flock of Israel. God promises to gather the flock and to raise up a new king from David's line to save Judah and Israel. A reading from Jeremiah. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherds who shepherd my people. It is you who have driven my flock away and have not attended to them. So I will attend to you for your evil doings, says the Lord. Then I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the lands where I've driven them, and I will bring them back to their fold, and they shall be fruitful and multiply. I will raise up shepherds over them who will shepherd them, and they shall not fear any longer or be dismayed, nor shall any be missing, says the Lord. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely, and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days Judah will be saved, and Israel will live in safety. And this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. We join in singing our message song, Bind Us Together. Together, Lord, bind us together with thoughts that cannot. 
on some different places today. So it's interesting, we just sang, you are God's chosen desire. When we look at the map, you can see there's five different sort of provinces that you see. Purple is Decapolis, green is Perea, yellow is Galilee, blue is Samaria, and then at the bottom there's Judea in that brownish color. So Judea thought, uh, so initially Israel went all the way from Galilee down to Judea. But these upper parts had been conquered over the centuries. People had been carried into exile. The northern kingdom was lost and only Judea was left as a remnant, as we heard in our first reading. They were the little piece that was cut out and left. To them, they were surviving, and there are important places there, like Bethlehem and Jerusalem. Of course, Jerusalem is the seat of the Jewish faith. That's where the temple was, and that's where you could go and you could offer your best sacrifices, and you could touch the wall to pray. You could really feel God's presence when you were in the temple. And that's why Jerusalem was such an important place. But what ended up happening, of course, is the people that were in that area, the people who could get to Jerusalem, thought, well, we are God's chosen desire. We are the family of God. And to some extent, they lost the ability to say, you also, Samaria, Galilee, Perea, Decapolis, you are the family of God, and you are also God's chosen desire. And so Judea became inward looking and probably thought of themselves, and again, to some extent, um, it's never all, all or nothing, but thought of themselves as the real Israel. In our reading from today, we read from chapter 6, the very end of it. So chapter 6 begins in Nazareth, so that's just at the bottom of Galilee find the button on here. Uh, So there's Nazareth. So that's Joseph's hometown. Bethlehem was where the line of his family was from, but Nazareth was where their home and their shop and all those things were. But when Jesus taught and did wonders in Nazareth, the people didn't recognize him. And in fact, they mocked him. They said, we knew you when you were in diapers. We don't see you doing anything amazing. He might have done amazing things, but they were not going to see it. And so we're kind of moving outward from Jerusalem up to Nazareth with people who are so inward looking that they can't see what God is doing. And so then chapter 6 goes on, and we hear of Jesus sending the disciples out all over Galilee, And they came back together. And the part of the story that was cut out there is the feeding of the 5,000 men. Plus women, plus children. That's probably the feeding of the 20,000. So, but that was on the shore of the lake there. And so in this part of the gospel, we have Jesus. Is this going to work? There it is. Ping-ponging back and forth across the lake. 
Um, and so now they've landed at a place called Genesaret. You can look at the map, but you won't see it. Genesaret was right about here on that left side of the Jordan, and it didn't even make it on the map. So we're going further and further from the seats of power and further and further from the people who have proof that they are God's chosen people. So we see Jesus and his disciples moving ever outward and the crowds recognizing him and getting bigger and bigger until Jesus' disciples don't even have time to eat because everyone wants to hear how they can be met by God in this wonderful way. So for all that the people down here can look down their noses at other people and say, we're God's chosen people. You aren't. You Samaritans, you worship on your mountain in your land. That's not acceptable. And even further out, oh, Galilee, oh, you rural people, you don't know anything about this. And yet, where do we see the real followers of Jesus? Where do we see the people who are really looking for the Messiah? It's not in the seat of power. It's way out, literally in the, the neck of the woods <laughs> where Jesus has gone out, a town that's not even on the map. For us, we want to be real followers of Jesus. We want to be, we don't want to be the people who say, well, we have this place, we have this mark on the map, so we're done. There's nothing more we need to do. We own God. No, to be real means to be authentic, to be genuine, which means for us to be humble about the power we don't have to heal, to love, to welcome, all those things. And yet Jesus takes all those powers and he goes away from worldly power out to where people truly need him and are willing to chase him down and scurry about to meet him. So for us, we look at this map, and I don't know about you, the thing that stands out to me is how much water is on that map. At the, so if we go from the top up here, so this is the mouth of the Jordan, somewhere up here. The Jordan River flows down. Um, that's the Lake of Galilee, the Sea of Galilee, where Jesus called the fishermen where they, he walked on the water, where he stilled the storm. This is the lower Jordan River, and this is the Dead Sea. I see all that water reaching out to nourish land and people. And in that, I see the waters of our baptism. I see that we don't have to be down in Jerusalem but that the water reaches us wherever we are. God's promises come to us. Jesus went to people that could not worship at the temple. And he met them, he ate with them, he blessed them, he healed them. And he opened to them a new life. And that is what happens for us in our baptism. And so as you look at this map, you see the waters that come from further places here and that reach out into further places there. That God's promises come to us wherever we are. God's love comes to us wherever we are. And then we're given the privilege of carrying that good news wherever we go. So for people who are thirsting to know that they matter and people who are thirsting to know that they're more than a test score or an income or a job rank. For people who need to know that God will come find them and that God will come shepherd them. The sign of this water, the sign of this water is a gift. And so I invite you as you leave worship today to put your hand in the water and to remember the promises of your baptism and to remember that water goes wherever water wants to go. They say water always wins, right? 
and the waters of baptism give us that promise. We could not build a boundary on that map that the water couldn't find its way through. And that is the good news of God's love for us and for all of God's beloved. Amen. I invite you to rise in body or spirit as we join in the prayers of the people. Rooted in Christ and sustained by the Spirit, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all of creation. Tend your church, O God. Encourage all the leaders of the church in their proclamation of the gospel. Raise up new leaders and encourage those pursuing a call to ordained ministry. Emboldened all the baptized, especially those celebrating their baptismal anniversary this week, to embody your love and justice, and empower us, O Lord, to carry our baptism, your promises, with us to a thirsty world. Hear us, O God. Your Your mercy mercy is great. Restore your creation, O God. We especially pray for those for whom waters have been too much this week, in Germany and Belgium, and we pray for lands that need water and cooling, especially the western portion of our nation. O Lord, revive our land. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Reconcile the nations, O God. Break down the dividing walls, whether walls on maps or walls in our hearts and minds. Break down those walls that would make us strangers to one another. Lord, unite us as one human family. Equip our leaders to deal wisely with conflict and guide diplomats who seek peaceful solutions. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Heal your people, O God. Give rest to those who are weary, especially caregivers and those who continue in recovery. Give comfort to those who are grieving or feel far off from you. And grant recovery to those who are ill, especially those we name before you now. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Nourish this congregation, O God. Prepare a table where we receive food for our hungering spirits and renew our commitment to provide for one another and revitalize ministries of feeding and nurturing hungry neighbors. Help us especially this week, O Lord, to go beyond, to go beyond in showing your love to all who come for Vacation Bible School. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You lead us home, O God. We give thanks for all who have died now citizens with the saints, especially those we name before you in memory now. As you have received them into your heavenly home, so welcome all of us to dwell in your house forever. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We lift these and all our prayers to you, O God, confident in the promise of your saving love through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. At this time, we invite our Vacation Bible School volunteers to come forward as we commission you for the work you will do this week. (laughs) Our theme for Vacation Bible School is Go Beyond with God. It is an outer space theme. You've seen our books behind bars display in the narthex, and soon we are going to decorate the building so that when kids come here, they know they're in a place that is different from the rest of the world. Different not only because of our outer space artwork, but because of the love that they will be shown and the promises they will be taught. And so I ask you, will you give your hearts 
and your minds, your spirit and strength to serve the children and parents that come here this week. If so, please respond. I will, and I ask God to help me. And will you endeavor to let God go beyond in your own hearts so that you can help build justice and peace in all the earth? If so, respond, I will, and I ask God to help me. And congregation, will you pray for these volunteers, the parents and children and families that will be ministered to this week? If so, please answer, we will, and we ask God to help us. receive the blessing for this week that you may be ministered to by God and that you may give joy, knowledge, and hope to all who come. In Jesus' name, amen. Receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. We join in our sending song. us forth to serve. Thanks be to God.